morning and welcome to worship. It's the season of Thanksgiving and I am thankful for life and thankful for our hope in Jesus Christ. As you celebrate this week in whatever way you're able to celebrate given our circumstances around COVID-19, remember, be grateful for the many ways that God has blessed us even in this season of pandemic and protest. I'm excited to introduce our preacher for this week. She's my first cousin, the Reverend Jatan Daniels, who's an elder in the AME Church. She's a part of the ministry team of New Bethel AME Church in Lithonia, Georgia, and she is a powerful woman of God. Be blessed. For God has given her a powerful word, and I know that God is going to minister to you through her. Thank you, Brian and Jason, as always, for your hard work. And thank you for tuning in. Enjoy worship.
Good morning, Mount Zion United Methodist Church. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I'd like to take a moment just to say thank you to your wonderful pastor, the Reverend Dr. Cynthia Pelt, for allowing me to bring a message to you all this morning. Dr. Belt, or Cousin Cynthia as I call her, is my first cousin. And I don't even have the words to describe how humbled I am to be asked to bring a message to you all this morning from someone I have admired my entire life. She's a little bit older than I am, which is fine, but her example of a godly woman, of a virtuous woman, has been awesome my entire life. I'd like to give a shout out to her husband, Wendell. Hey, Wendell. And I'd like to shout out to all of my family in the greater Maryland, D.C. area. I bring you greetings from Lithonia, Georgia, New Bethel AME Church, where the pastor is William, Dr. Reverend William Thomas, Jr., and his wife is First Lady Reverend Angela Thomas, are the angels of the house. We are so grateful to God to have them. I also want to give a special shout out to the love of my life. For 32 years, my husband, Derek, thank you for always being there for me. Now let us pray. Awesome and amazing God, we acknowledge you as King of kings and Lord of lords. We glorify you, O oh God, for allowing us to be a part of the wake up call this morning. We know you didn't have to do it, but we are oh so grateful that you did. Your servant sits before you this morning asking you to hide her behind the cross as you use me to deliver a word to your people this morning. Send your sweet spirit upon me. Let your people see and hear you this morning and not me. Let your words fall fresh upon their anointed heads and not only spur them to hear the word, but spur them on to action for the kingdom of God here on earth. It, we seal this prayer in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Psalm. Psalm 91 comes from the Psalm. Psalm 91 verses 1 through 16. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Again, Psalm 91, verses 1 through 16. And the word reads, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. 
I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the pestilence, the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. In their hands, they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a rock. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot because he has set his love upon me. Therefore, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. The word of God for the people of God. And we say thanks be to God. Most of the 150 Psalms recorded in the Bible have clearly defined authors. Some of the authors are David, Solomon, Moses, Asaph, Korah, and Ethan. However, some of the Psalms don't have a clearly defined author. And interestingly enough, Psalm 91 is one of those Psalms. Most scholars attribute its authorship to Moses on the day that he completed the building of the tabernacle in the desert. The verses describe Moses' own experience entering the tabernacle and being enveloped by the divine cloud. How Hebrew scholars teach that Moses composed this psalm while ascending into the cloud hovering over Mount Sinai at which time he recited these words as protection from the angels of destruction. As the author wrote the words of the psalm under the anointing and guidance of the Holy Spirit, he probably never dreamt of what would happen, that it would bring great comfort to literally thousands and millions of people's people through the passage of history. This should be an encouragement to us that anything that we do for the Lord, no matter how insignificant we may think it is, it can touch many, many lives for the present age as well as future generations. For a title to this message this morning, the Lord had me stop by to let you all know that better days are coming. I know that we can all agree this year 2020 has definitely been one for the ages. Normally, when we think of 2020, we think of having perfect eyesight, perfect vision. Some people would label this year as anything but having perfect vision. However, I'd like to submit to you this morning that as devastating as this year has been, we have most certainly gained 2020 vision. On a personal note, my life took a turn for the worse in October of 2019, the loss of my beloved sister. And as if that wasn't enough, we lost the matriarch of my, on my father's, on my husband's side of the family, my beloved mother-in-law, the day before Thanksgiving. And just when I thought I was about to rebound, I got, we got blindsided with this worldwide pandemic, killing to date approximately 240,000 Americans, neighbors, friends, relatives, co-workers, and the list goes on and on, all gone in the blink of an eye. 
no real explanation given. It's a hoax, we were told. It's in China and could never come here. And yet our hearts broke for every loss we experienced. In the height of the pandemic, my 29-year-old goddaughter, a month before her 30th birthday, went to bed on Saturday morning and did not get up on Sunday. The devastation of the losses was almost unbearable. This was so heavy, and it brought me to my knees, which is exactly where I needed to be. I immediately ran to the 91st Psalm because I know that throughout my life, when things have gotten unbearable, just absolutely outrageous, I could find peace and solace for my soul, for my damaged soul, by meditating on the words of this song. The hope of knowing that God was still on the throne, and though no matter what it looked like, he would never leave me nor forsake me, that no matter what all things would work out for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. All I could do was cry out for him. The amazing meaning of Psalm 91 and the four names of God that are within this psalm allowed me to realize that better days are coming. This morning, we're just going to focus on Psalm 91 verses 1 and 2 which has become one of my favorite all-time passages of Scripture. When life is draining and there seems to be no time or place to rest, these words are reassuring, comforting, and encouraging. But there's also a, dip, dip, a deeper meaning in this passage. Hidden in plain sight in these verses, there are four names for God. The Most High, the Almighty, the Lord, and my God. One might ask, why does the writer use four different names in two verses? And what's significant, significant about it? Well, I'm going to tell you. The first name, the Most High, is the Hebrew word Elyon. It suggests a supreme monarch, one who is elevated above all things. The name signifies God's majesty and sovereignty and preeminence. It carries a connotation of a Davidic king that reigns above all other kings and is first used in scripture in Genesis 14 and 18, describing Abraham's encounter with the priest king Melchizedek. Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of God most high. Melchizedek gives us a picture of Christ in several ways. And it is fitting that this story contains the first use of the name of God in scripture. Verse 1 speaks to the protection of one who dwells in the shelter of the most high. And it causes us to ask, where is it that we dwell? Do we dwell on our own self-doubt? Do we dwell in anger? Do we dwell in what could be or what could have been? Or do we dwell in the shelter of the Most High God, the Holy King of Heaven, who promises to protect and keep us? Better days are coming. The second name, the Almighty, is translated from the word Shaddai. The word Shaddai has many meanings, but as you might imagine, it primarily suggests a mighty, powerful God who is strong beyond our imagination and is more than capable to supply our every need. He is the God who parted the sea and controls all of creation. In his name, and in his power, there is no need that cannot be met and no circumstances that cannot be overcome. As a matter of fact, the only thing that God Almighty Shaddai cannot do is fail. 
The third name of the Lord is the personal name for God revealed to Moses at the beginning of the burning bush in Exodus chapter 6 verses 2. This personal name for God was considered so sacred in Judaism that the original pronunciation is uncertain only that it contained the letters capital Y, capital H, capital W, and capital H. In Latin, it's capital J, capital H, capital V, capital H. It has been translated as Yahweh and Jehovah. And more often as Lord, L, capital O, capital R, capital D. The significance of his name is that it represents the relatable God. The one who seeks, us to, seeks for us to know him on a deep personal level. The God who is all-powerful, divine ruler of all things is also the God who knows every hair on our head every joy and fear in our hearts and desires to, for us to know him as intimately, as a friend. This God who created the universe and all it contains is not just some far off unknowable being, but a father, redeemer, and friend. Better days are coming, y'all. The fourth name of God is in this, in this first two scriptures, is my God, comes from the Hebrew Elohim. This name first appears in the very beginning of the Bible, in Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. When Elohim occurs in scripture, it is typically translated as God. In Greek, it is translated as theos, which is where we get the word theology from. It means the one who is first or the creator and is technically a plural word. So it's fitting that this is how God is referenced in Genesis 1.1. As a creator who is one yet plural, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The psalmist is proclaiming that God in whom we, he trusts is the same God who created all things, the first and the last, and the God who is forever faithful to his creation. In the span of just two verses, we see the beauty of God. His ways are higher than our ways, yet we can speak to him as a friend. What a takeaway. God is at the same time unsearchable, yet so very near to us. In his shadow and in his shelter, we find strength, comfort, and rest for our souls. So it does not matter who thinks that they're in charge. God is in control. He just wanted me to stop by and let you know that better days are coming. It ain't going to always be like this. It's not going to always be this way. Better days are coming. God is working on our behalf. And there is nothing that he, we can't accomplish with God on our side. So I challenge us today and every day to not rely on our, on our 2020 vision or lack thereof. But to put our natural with God's super and then sit back and watch the power of God work in our lives to right the wrongs of the past, to create a peace that surpasses all understanding, to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Almost 2,000 years ago, all the forces of hell assembled against a man crucified between two thieves. On Sunday morning, Jesus conquered them and the greatest enemy of all, death. And because of that, we can say better days are coming. Let us pray. Lord God, I come to you this morning. I thank you. I praise you. I am so grateful for you. Grateful for all that you've done. Grateful for what you're doing and grateful for what you're about to do.
Now, Lord God, I ask you to wrap your loving arms around everybody within the sound of my voice. Give them the peace that surpasses all understanding. Help them to see things with their spiritual eyes and not their physical eyes. It's when we look at things through the spirit that we can really see how the better days will be coming. Lord God, I thank you again for being here with me and for, for just allowing me to be your servant. It is in Jesus' precious name that I pray. Amen. Now, I'm going to tell you something that I always do. I never end a sermon or 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 a, a, anything that has to do uh, with uh, delivering a message without asking you, do you know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? You see, all the wonderful things that I talked about, all the things that I spoke of that have to do with God really only matter if you know him as your Lord and Savior. If you have said with your mouth if, and you believe in your heart that J Jesus Christ is your Savior, then you are saved. And you go to a good Bible-based church, and you will be and, and, and learn more and more about God and you will be full and able to rely on him during all the times of your life. Good, bad and ugly. Now, as we close, I'm going to do the benediction. I want to thank God again for the opportunity to come before his people. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to make a stand without blemish in the presence of his glory with rejoicing to the only, only wise God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Be glory, majesty, power, and dominion before all time, now and forevermore. And the people of God said, amen, amen, and amen.